I'm Doyle Bueller, and I'm on session number 77 with Mark Gerard. No, not quite that many. We're, we're about, I think, about 16 or so. Um, so welcome to the strategystorming.co uh, live stream that I've been doing throughout the day. Hopefully it's working. I go back and check and um, uh, watch for the comments as well. So it looks like we're good to go. So I want to give a quick little introduction today. I'm going to, or this session rather, I'm going to be talking with Mark Jarrett, who's joining me all the way from England, right? London, England? Horsham, between Horsham. London and Brighton. Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Well, thanks, Mark. Um, and just to give everybody who's just joining in, uh, if you're joining on in on the live stream, welcome. Uh, you'll be able to see it on LinkedIn or Facebook or YouTube uh, or into my Facebook group as well, the League of Extraordinary Entrepreneurs. So I'm really excited to be here. I'm going to be sharing uh, the grand opening of strategystorming.co. And I had have had some amazing conversations as well um, throughout the day. So we started at nine o'clock per time, which is, uh, what is that? Three, four, five hours, seven hours, eight hours. It's been a while. So we're up to the third page of amazing speakers. So we've gone through all of these, uh, throughout the day, and now we're up to the third and final, final page. So we have up first as Mark Jarrett, as I said, he's the founder of over 200 WhatsApp groups. Hopefully he'll give us an update on the numbers uh, as well. And then who's coming up after that at, at half past the hour uh, is Trevor Nell, co-founder of Wisdoms 123 from South Africa as well. So as I said, it's been a pretty exciting day. Lots of amazing people that I've been able to talk to. Uh, and when I was scheduling this for the launch, it's like, um, getting all these people was like, obviously a lot of, a lot of fun and a lot of work too, but it's like, oh my goodness, what did I get myself into? Cause I schedule like enough for 13 hours, 13 plus hours of people. So I'm really looking forward to getting through all of these conversations and hopefully I'll be able to keep my voice as well. <laughs> Excuse me. So what are we here for? Well, we're here to celebrate strategystorming.co and I'm going to announce some new prizes as well at the end of uh, Mark's session and uh, Dean's session as well coming up, um, or sorry, Trevor's session. So we'll be able to, to, if you're interested in some of those prizes, we've got a pile of books. And again, I'm going to go into detail. I've got some, some workbooks, I've got some business models, I've got some brainstorming tools, all kinds of stuff. So go to strategystorming.co and you can enter into the draw as well. And let's get started with Mark. So welcome back, Mark. Appreciate you taking the time to, to join us. And you were saying you've already had like multiple meetings and it's only like 10 a.m. Yes. Thank you for having me, Doyle. No, it's always a pleasure to, to talk. So tell us about your your WhatsApp world. What's going on? So, yeah, it's now 250-something uh, WhatsApp groups. Each WhatsApp group has, got, has its own theme. So that might be biotech or construction, fashion, music, automotive, merchants and acquisitions, investment opportunities, you name it, there's a WhatsApp group for everything. And the rationale behind that is quite simple. I, I don't know anything about biotech, but what I do know is when you get two or more people in the same room that have an interest in biotech, it's more likely to lead to a meeting of minds um, and a friendship and a possible transaction. So at the end of the day, business boils down to two things, and that's people and trust. So what I've done is created and curated an ecosystem of all these WhatsApp groups, and I've created an environment where these uh, thought leaders and entrepreneurs throughout the world feel safe to engage, and then the business comes later. So I'm all about relationship building. That's why I'm a little bit anti-multi-level uh, marketing, which tends to be transactional right from the beginning. I'm, I'm more about building up those human connections and, and then doing business. And I've created something quite extraordinary because now that we're mo moving out of the pandemic, people who have met virtually in my WhatsApp groups are meeting in person and in real life and watching virtual morph into reality is really, really rewarding. Have you it's, seen, have you seen like um, a decrease in sort of that engagement on WhatsApp since things have kind of recovered and we've been able to go outside and, and connect 
normally, if for lack of a better expression? Um, no, it's about the same. Um, by the way, I don't see WhatsApp groups as a panacea for, for networking. That I see them as a co conduit, a halfway house between LinkedIn, which I sometimes describe as the world's least social social network, and places like Zoom, Remo, or, of course, in person. I mean, the whole point of networking is to arrive at a meaningful one-to-one -one situation. But if you go to my LinkedIn, you'll see that I wrote an article in 2018 called The Wonderful World of Virtual Networking. Back then, no one really took me that seriously. But when the pandemic came, it became the only way to network. But I love virtual networking because it saves so much time, money and carbon. Um, but perhaps best of all is the globality of it all. I mean, look at you. Well, you're 10,000 miles away from me right now. But it feels like you're next door. Utterly brilliant. Love it. Yeah, no, we've been able to connect and and uh, through WhatsApp and through these these forums as well. And mm -hmm. that's to me that 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 powerful ingredient here is that we can actually connect uh, with others around the world at any time in any place. So it's so mm -hmm. so powerful. I, 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 you know, you have to see that value though, to be able to recognize that, which brings up a question like, like, do you feel you shouldn't have to sell this? People should just get it and join. Like, why don't you have a thousand groups? Um, is it, is it kind of a scaling thing? Is it because we still have to educate people? Not that that's a bad thing, but we still have, mm. you still have to educate people to, to say, Hey, there is, there is a channel that you can use that allows you to connect with people. Well, WhatsApp groups belong to something called dark social. I don't like the term. It sounds a bit sinister, but it's actually yeah. a really good thing. It means that they're hidden uh, mm. from public view. And searching for my WhatsApp groups on Google is an exercise in futility. You won't find them because they're hidden. And it's a good job they're hidden because I encourage members to share their triumphs obviously but also i like to keep keep things real you know we're all human so i encourage people also to share their trauma um it's a, like the antithesis of corporate thinking corporates tend to be quite closed and secretive uh i i'm the exact opposite i uh, i i get people to share um and um but there again some of these things are quite private so it's good that these groups are hidden uh, from public view. They're invite only, but Doyle, which makes them private, exclusive, exclusive. <laughs> yes. So, um, actually, one of my bigger groups is called Powerful Women Group, and now uh, women are starting. Uh, they're approaching me, demanding to be uh, invited into it. Um, and that's where LinkedIn does actually play quite a big role in what I do. Because on LinkedIn, you can see where they went to school, where they've yeah. worked, what their interests are, who's recommended them, the mutual connections. Um, so it's very powerful, but it's not a particularly good communications tool. Whereas WhatsApp is the exact opposite. WhatsApp is uh, a very great communications tool but not such a good information tool so the two really complement each other really well oh, okay and and how's the best way to kind of use those two together effectively so when someone joins my whatsapp group ecosystem they i i get them to introduce themselves by saying who they are where they live what they do who they want to meet is the important one a fun fact to show their human side, and then they put their LinkedIn URL. So their LinkedIn activity takes off when they join the WhatsApp groups. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that's good. I, it takes, it still takes a lot of work though, right? Like it's nothing necessarily easy to do, creating groups and, and joining them and talking and that sort of thing. No, it, it's not. But I'm developing something called Let's Net dot work. Yeah. And that's going to be a hybrid of WhatsApp and LinkedIn. And because I want to move away from these beer moths, 
Yeah, they've got too much power. Yeah. And that was demonstrated two days ago when WhatsApp went down uh, for for an hour. Um, and then about four months ago, it went down for four hours. In fact, Instagram, Facebook and WhatsApp all went down. So oh, they're really? all owned by the same company. Oh. And um, just made me realise how dependent I have become on this technology. Yeah, no kidding. Overly dependent? Um, well, actually, to be truth be known, I, I, I quite enjoyed having an enforced digital detox. <laughs> uh, and, you know, this 24-7 always open global internet village that we now inhabit is, is yeah. both a blessing and a curse. Yeah, uh, I love the fact that um, you know you're wide awake. You're, it's your evening. You're in uh, the southern hemisphere. I'm in the northern hemisphere. There's always someone awake somewhere. Yeah, but there's also a downside because uh, when you operate 250 WhatsApp groups, it can be sometimes quite a challenge to switch off. Yeah, I'll say like it's always going through your head of, of the conversations you missed and the conversations where you have you had no idea that we respond to. I don't know. I would I would find it difficult, Mark. You're doing something pretty cool there. <laughs> just keeping it all in track in your head. I yeah. sometimes just miss the LinkedIn messages. Um, and it's like, oh, yeah, I re remember you sent something like three weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, it can, it can be a challenge because we we are all being bombarded from all angles nowadays. Um, you know, not just LinkedIn, but there's Twitter, there's Instagram, there's uh, uh, TikTok, if you're that way inclined. Um, mm. Email, of course. Uh, I actually wrote an article recently about why I prefer uh, WhatsApp to email. Yeah. Um, because I've had about 20 or 30 uh, email accounts over the past 20 years or so okay um i find that setting up an email account either takes two minutes or it takes like half a day <laughs> uh, configuring it all but i've only ever had one telephone number oh really well that's pretty that's pretty good yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it can be a little bit of a challenge managing that. I I still, you know, I, I use it, but I don't use it. So I don't know. I, I can, there's still a lot, so much more to learn. What What's the best way, Mark, of kind of like um, you using it for, for, for business, but also, as you said, it's not just about business. It's about the network and the community as well. What's, what's mm -hmm. the best way to, to use it? What are, what are your kind of tips for surviving WhatsApp or you or leveraging it even? not just surviving, but thriving with it. Okay, so if you're networking in a WhatsApp group, it's not about you, it's about mm. them. If you take an interest in other people, they will reciprocate. You know, net networking is like opening a bank account. You cannot make a withdrawal until you make a deposit. So it's about serving others. Mm. Yeah, that's that's a great point. I'm taking all these these points down. So so what what would that be like? Um, can you give me some examples, like telling stories? You know, just commenting. Um, it could be so, it could be something as simple as a welcome. So I don't know if you've noticed, but some of the people coming through into the network are just off the charts, saying incredible human beings. Mm. Uh, so just by saying hi, Susan. Uh, my name is Doyle. Uh, welcome to the group. My name is Doyle. Uh, and then include your LinkedIn. Um, just that simple act of engagement. Uh, first of all, it adds to a sense of community. Yeah. And by, by welcoming that person, you're raising your profile. Uh, because, as you know, people have got really short attention spans nowadays. Yeah. Uh, and it, it takes like a dozen touch points now before they even remember who you are. But will people so, remember you from doing that introduction? Well, I, re I reward engagement mm. uh, in my WhatsApp group. So if someone welcomes someone, I will reintroduce them. Mm. 
Okay. As a, a as a form of reward. Okay, I didn't know yeah. that. So I'm going to have to do some more introductions then, Mark. Right, right. And if you were paying attention, uh, you should <laughs> you would have noticed it. So um, there are two types of lurker. Um, what, what is named? What kind of lurker am I? <laughs> you're the kind of lurker who's basically too busy. Yeah, you've got a life. Okay. So you, you you've you you've got better things to do than faff around in WhatsApp groups all day. That's 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 my job. Um no, seriously, there are a lot of people in my network are really, really busy people. They haven't got time. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. then the other time of and that's forgivable. What isn't forgivable are the people who uh, do watch what's going on, but never never engage. Yeah. Um, okay. and uh, let's have a look how many WhatsApp groups you're in. Hang on, 17. That sounds about right. Doyle, there we go. I thought you said it was private, Mark. You shouldn't be able to see that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then I, I won't reveal the hard number. No, 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 I'm curious um, how many because I 39. 39. Holy moly, so I gotta, I gotta up my WhatsApp game. Mm. excellent so your your number one tip just to to close things off is to engage right so make sure that it's not about yourself it's about them introduce yourself and we'll get bonus points for mark if we actually do introduce ours yeah um, and it, like it. Welcome. So, so, some yeah. some of the groups are really like the virtual international pub group that you're yeah. in gets yeah. gets really busy yeah so if you wake up in the morning and you see like 148 missed messages, don't don't panic. Don't try and backpedal. Yeah. I do try and share stuff that's relevant with the relevant people. So, for example, if if, if we're chatting about Perth in Australia, yeah. I will then take a, a screenshot of that and send it to you privately, which I have been doing from time to time, haven't I? And then yes. you dive in at the relevant point um and uh that ties into my networking concierge service so people are now hiring me to network for them because about one in five people hate networking but most people just don't have the time to network so if yeah, they yeah. hire me i network for them excellent no well, that's good hint, hint doyle yeah hint <laughs> Hint, hint. Actually, Dean is is runs a, a networking business group here in Perth. So you guys should talk. You guys don't know each other, Dean, Mark. No, have you met? No, no, we have, we have we have another pleasure yet. But uh, I'll, I'll reach out to you, Mark, for sure. Be keen to get. Um, it sounds interesting. So we keen to get more, uh, some more insights as well. Yeah. No, so sure. the easiest thing to do, Dean, if you go to my uh, website, mjconsultancy.com, E-M-J-A-Y consultancy.com you'll see that there's a web uh, WhatsApp button on my website and just click on that and then you can ping me a message and really? then I'll send you a menu of all my groups and uh, a protocol and I'll send you my introduction which you can then use as a template for your introduction Cheers, I appreciate that Thanks Mark M -M -J consultancy.com E-M-J-A-Y consultancy.com. Yeah, cool. I just put my, it in the, the my chat. My son coded it, and it's uh, exactly the same green as WhatsApp. Oh, okay, cool. Um, There actually is a, a is an Australian group, Dean, as well. So it's just for, for Aussies, and there's a Knucklehead Canadian group as well. So there's there's quite a few. So Mark's really kind of tap that market of grouping and, and based on themes and locations and that sort of thing. So what is your most popular group then? So the virtual international pub and the powerful yeah. women group, they act as that, that they don't really have a theme. It's more like a, a, a yeah. place to just go and, uh, and chat. We all learned during the pandemic that working from home can actually be quite, it's quite solitary and, and lonely. Um, so it's great to have. A, a, I mean, the clue is in the name, Virtual International Pub. Is it? <laughs> uh, and what are the initials? 
yeah please what what are the (laughs) vip there you go very important Uh, person that's what vip stands for i'm i'm and now that virtual international pub that's a perfect name a thing i i acquired the domain virtual international pub.com yeah and uh i get to let people in to the network because I've got the, the WhatsApp group, I've got a Telegram group, but the star attraction is the always open room in Remo. Uh, which I was you're going to ask you about that last week. Yeah. Yeah. So you're free to use that, Doyle, anytime okay. you want. Okay. Because we're all Zoomed out, you know, and I don't know of a Zoom room that never closes, do you? Uh, no because it's a lot of work well remember back in the day you used to do that and i would kind of mm. be your australian person where the the globe yeah. turned to that area and we tried to keep it open as long as possible so yeah so it's it's hard to keep it open it takes an awful lot of work but hey that, that's part of it too and it occurred to me whilst having a shower a few months ago that we don't have a day to celebrate networking so um on november right. the 5th there's going to be Global Networking Day. Um, and if you could come to that, it lasts 13 hours. But yeah. it's freestyle networking. So you can come for half an hour, two hours, five hours, or stay all day. It's up to you. Mm. Um, and that's going to be a, a, a kind of woodstock of networking. Yeah, no, for sure. Thanks for the reminder. I've actually, I've been on, I've had that in my calendar for like months when you first started to yeah. launch it as well. So looking yeah. forward to that. Uh, as well can you throw the link in the in the chat and then i can actually add it to the um to the sure. the comments in the live streams okay cool that's november the 5th you said yeah i did that on purpose because uh, we, here in the uk there's a nursery rhyme called mm. remember remember the 5th of november oh, okay. uh, so it makes it really easy to remember okay um yeah. Basically, that's something called Guy Fawkes Night. Yes, Guy Fawkes, yeah. Because a guy called Guy Fawkes tried to blow up the Houses of Parliament uh, yeah. many years ago. And the way our politics are, is going, I, I, I suspect quite a few people wish he had succeeded. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, there you oh, go, Global Networking. Yeah, cool. No, thanks for that, Mark globalnetworkingday.com no yeah i was thinking of using actually remo for for this but mm. yeah i just wasn't able to kind of put it together uh in the end so so remo is great for small meetings like this two mm. three four people fine um if if it's a medium meeting of 10 people or or, or 20 people yeah. i would su- suggest stick with zoom oh okay yeah, yeah. Because you get this scenario sometimes where a table is full um, and it becomes awkward for other people to join the table and whatnot. But there again, if it's a big event with, say, 100 or more people, that, that's where Remo uh, really comes into its own. Mm. Because you can then work the room intuitively like you would in real life. Yeah, no, for sure. No, that's good. Yeah. Like I wanted something where people could come and and we've had some, some more guests so, more so in the morning. Um, but then I'm broadcasting live as well uh, to those channels also. But the problem is that I can't actually see the comments, right? Because Zoom doesn't connect directly to um, uh, LinkedIn. So I can't actually see that. So I have to enter restream or go to, to LinkedIn and actually see it from that angle. So it's a little bit difficult. So the technology is not quite there, but. Okay. Thanks Dean. I've got you. We're Excellent. Yeah. You guys need to, to chat. Cause yeah, like I said, Dean has a networking group uh, here in, in Perth and uh, with, with live events, but uh, yeah, just anyway, be good for you guys to get together. Excellent. So thanks so much, Mark. Appreciate uh, you taking the time to join us. Uh, Trevor Nell, if you're there, uh, we're ready to go. Um, I'm just going to move you out of the spotlight, uh, remove spotlight. So, and then we'll just continue from there. Oh, there he is. Mr. Green screen. Yeah, let's get rid of the He's green from, screen. We've got load shedding on the go. Okay. It's tre- uh, Trevor it's from good. the Trevor from the Matrix. Yep. 
Excellent. So I'm just going to do a quick little intro. Welcome, Trevor. Uh, thanks for joining in on the strategystorming.co grand opening. Uh, you're the second act all the way from South Africa. And we're going to talk about wisdoms, right? Wisdoms one, two, three. Excellent. Yep. Uh, Looking forward we're to gonna it. we're going to do. Yeah. And, and if, I, if I can just throw in some prompts there for Mark Jarrett, I think the guy's a genius, man. I agree uh, with that. I, and ridiculously good-looking, too. Uh, absolutely. And uh, hopefully um, he's, he's not going to uh, kill my presentation here by staying online so all the girls uh, fancy but, him. And go thank, thank, you, thank you, Trevor. Actually, I launched <laughs> the world's first celebrity chat line uh, about 10 years ago, and Lindsay Lohan wasn't on there. Uh. But yeah. the, the mother and the father were, and the mother was charging $6 a minute more than the father. And she said I was a genius as well. I, I, I wonder if she she smokes weed. <laughs> she does now. <laughs> <laughs> they do in Canada, where you come from. It's yeah, really. Been, Don't, been can't legal. just... Yeah, they're talking about it here, but what can you do it in? Can you smoke it in England? No, uh, Legally? no. Well, yeah, the Germans have got a great word, yain, yes and no. Yes, I and think no. the metropolitan don't get police, caught. yeah, the, the London police have got better things to do than you know, um, chase people. But in Scott, in remote parts of Scotland where they've got nothing to do, uh, they might throw the book at you. But okay. uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's hardly crime of the century oh, right. uh, yeah, to smoke yeah. a bit of weed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks so much, Mark. And feel free to stick around or if you need to take off. Uh, yeah, please do so as well. Really appreciate you taking the time. Good to chat again. Got to do this more often. Good to see you, dude. And, and less stalk. I'll do less stalking or lurking. Um, lurking. 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 Yeah, wrong word. Yeah. Sorry. Whoops. <laughs> 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 excellent so thanks mark trevor welcome thanks for joining thank in yeah yeah thank the, you. the been, floor is yours yeah i've been listening in the background since early this morning just to make certain uh that i catch the the gist of what it is you're all about um but uh, i i just want to doff my cap uh, to yourself, I don't want to doff it too high uh, because then people will see that I'm twice your age, uh, <laughs> and also uh, that that Mark is a couple of generations behind myself. Um, but I think um, I might have something to add here, uh, going back about fifty or sixty years in business. Um, um, that just wise man into the discussion here. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, is it wise? I mean. Uh, you know, I got into business, uh, you know, uh, this uh, this idea of strategizing was actually before I got into business. Um, I was actually, uh, you know, a sportsman at a pretty uh, good level at school uh, and just after school as well. And uh, I recall strategy for me was off a whiteboard um, or... Uh, I was also in the bush war in those uh, bad old days of South Africa. <clears throat> and uh, I, I remember being absolutely engrossed um, with the development of sand models. And uh, before we went off on ops, uh, how we actually developed our strategies on sand models. So between uh, sports and I, I played good water polo, rugby and cricket, um, we would always sit down and we would work out our particular strategies going forward. Um, and, and I think one of the things that stood out for me in those early days is that I, I never really understood what was the difference between uh, strategy versus tactics. Um, so I thought I'd just drop that in, in case we've got a couple of youngsters here that actually haven't looked it up on Google. Yeah, um, please do. And, and, you know, quite simply for me, uh, strategy is is really uh, the long term view or the helicopter view, uh, and and that uh, when we were back in the bush days, uh, that's what we used to have to do. Is we used to have to go and get a 
higher level perspective of the lay of the land, which is effectively what we have to do in business. Uh, what is it that we want to do? And some of the links I've put in in the chat um, there, uh, you, you might want to talk about our project that we're doing, uh, creating difference makers in every city in the world, um, is you have to do your research uh, before you actually uh, develop your business or develop your strategy or develop any, any of the tactics. You have to go out there and do your research uh, so that you, you know what your objective is, you know what you want to achieve. Um, so those are the longer term views uh, in terms of strategy. And then the shorter term views for me, and, and I'll go back uh, because of water polo, um, was the tactics. Uh, that's how you zigzag. So you might have a strategy. This is how you're going to take on the other team, uh, or this is what you're going to do in the longer term. Um, but you know what? The, the game just doesn't roll out as you strategize on a whiteboard. There are defensive players or someone that you're playing against or, uh, you know, global economics actually throws up some sort of obstruction in your way and you've got to learn how to zigzag and, and that's what tactics is all about. And you, you can practice tactics, you can practice what ifs. Um, so I hope that gives just something of a little explanation of long-term strategy versus short-term tactics. Uh, but far away Doyle, uh, you've probably got questions. Uh, you've had some great input from, uh, from some great minds. Uh, so just lead me down a direction that perhaps you want yeah, no, to. No, cool. Well, I just, yeah, I wanted to, to bring you on board because, yeah, because of your ex experience, right? Um, to me that, that, that's, that's super important. And a lot of people don't always recognize that and, and recognize sort of those, those skills behind or the skills underneath the, the baseball cap as well. So, no, I just wanted to have a, you know, a conversation about some of the projects that you're working on. I know we've, we've spoken at, you know, a lot of times about the, the wisdoms project and what that is and how you're working it. And, and even then, you know, some of your specific strategies for making that Pull, pulling that together as well and what's working, mm. what, what may not be working. So yeah, it, it, that's just to maybe refresh my memory. Is, is that kind of the priority project right now? The wisdoms one, two, three. Yeah. Um, you know what? Uh, it's a team effort, obviously. So I've got the wisdoms one, two, three.com uh, link there uh, where you can go and find out about uh, wisdoms where our background is in corporate education and corporate business consulting uh, which happens to take us into life and business uh, development, uh, and we've developed programs. In fact, between uh, my two co-founders, who is our CEO, Lee Harrison, uh, enterprise development specialist, Ivan Anderson, and myself, we're already way over 150 years of life and business experience from uh, you know, listing of companies. And you don't uh, look a day past 42 there, Trevor. Uh, you know, you can lie, but uh, on my screen, I see a different picture. Uh, but yes, the internet talks a load of bull, but uh, thank you very much for that. I'm actually going to copy it and pass it on to my family. Um, the the background is is really we all we all come from very different and diverse backgrounds, but we've we've specialized in growing up over the past fifty odd odd years. The other two uh, are younger than me, um, but we've specialized in old style. Uh, business development and and listen, I think uh, I think the whole uh, world of of business is just getting back to basics, especially after pandemics. So uh, the old style might be new to some of the the youngsters. Uh, and but what is exciting is is how you use the basics on top of all the new technologies. We never had any of these technologies fifty odd years ago, uh, and in fact. Uh, you know, we discovered each other, uh, Doyle and Mark Jarrett, uh, over the pandemic. Uh, yeah. and, and that was our team turned around and said, well, look, um, if everything is shut down, uh, what can we do? And, you know, I headed up here 
a local chamber of commerce. And so I said, okay, guys, let's, let's just get on board and let's use this thing called Zoom. I didn't know what it was. Uh, Ivan sorted it out for me. And within a day, we were online and we were meeting people like you, Doyle, and, and Mark, and many, many more. Um, and that happened over... Um, uh, the pandemic period. And I, I remember, I mean, you're doing a marathon session here of what, about 12 hours? Um, 13, do you remember yeah. a marathon session we had of four days? Um, we, yeah, you but that? yeah, you, you, I do remember that. Yeah, that was like in the summer of 2020, wasn't it? Or yeah, the That's, summer in, in the north. So it'd be the winter in the south. Um, yeah. yeah, was that right? Like July, July 2020. I, yeah, true. look, Some, I was somewhere. Yeah. Geez, time, no, it time was just flies. Yeah, mm. I know. Like, I, I, I think I spoke at that event, but I, I yeah, look, I didn't, I didn't do the long miles like you did of, of managing that for four straight days. So <laughs> it, uh, listen, but it was amazing. And, and we met with people, as I say, yeah. uh, like yourselves and, and getting to find out. And it's amazing how many people then, uh, were not onto the social networking through Zoom. So, uh, you know, here I was sitting, uh, turning around and saying, well, what's an old fart like me doing at the forefront of this sort of technology? And then I have a look at the way that uh, someone like Mark Jarrett has actually turned around and carved out for a niche for himself in yeah. WhatsApp and building relationships. Now, I'm, I'm very different to Mark. Um, I'm, I'm a reluctant um, communicator. And I, I suppose if I go back 50 odd years um, in building businesses, um, you know, as the leader of these particular different businesses, and I've built some pretty large ones. The largest education franchise in the country was Academy of Learning. I had over 42 franchise operations wow. of my own, yeah. sold that out into a listed company. Um, I developed for my sins a, a um, investment company where I was one of the first to trade over 2.1 billion in total transaction value in derivatives, which none of the, uh, you know, none of the market actually knew in those early days, late 80s, early 1990s. Um, and then developed some pretty large distribution operations and uh, uh, a 20,000 strong business network uh, and various ideas. So, um, you know, if I, I think back, uh, I have never really been one that's uh, been too interested in um, getting serious about working. Um, but uh, I've also, I mean, God has a sense of humor because he knows that I'm pretty reluctant to get in front of people. But when you, when you launch these things, you have to be on the front stage. Someone has to actually yeah. kick Start the whole thing. And in fact, if I uh, bridge over 50 years to what we are now doing uh, at Wisdoms, is we've taken all of this learning, everything that we do within the corporate environments, and we are working out how to get it out to everyone and help everyone make a difference in every city of the world, taking these premium priced education programs that we've done and getting them out into the hands of people at a dollar a month. Um, so uh, that's that's quite a strategy that we have at the moment. And in fact, uh, we've, we've developed it as a long-term strategy. So if you go into, there's a link there, uh, I'm sure I've put in there, it's a manifesto link uh, where we have restyled our manifesto to be a thousand year manifesto. Oh, okay. And the reason that we've actually done that um, is to actually take ourselves out of this mix because when you've got the type of experience that we've got uh, and we know that we're pretty good at what we do. And by the way, I say that with all humility because we are nowhere near what it is that you do, Doyle, what it is that Mark does. And, and I think that's the beauty of what this internet has brought to us now is that you realize that you're in this totem pole of of social connection where there are millions of people that are way better than you, but there are also 
millions to billions of people that are not as high as you on the totem pole of whatever privilege you might have, whatever education you might have, whatever experience you might have. So there's a niche for everybody. And that perhaps fits in with uh, the long tail methodology. Uh, you know, where can you actually fit in to actually generate income uh, in this current environment? How can you use business basics to actually... Uh, plant those business basics on a foundation of all this new technology? How can you become the Mr. Beast? Uh, who, Mr. Mr. Beast, what's he, I think he hit about 10 million subscribers recently. He's, yeah. he, um, he's making an absolute fortune. Doing what? <laughs> Giving away blooming money to people to do outlandish things oh, really? um, oh. it's an incredible movement the guy's probably going to be a billion a billionaire if he's not already there um just through the net and he and he started as a youngster what eight to twelve years ago and there's still plenty of room for people to be doing this wow that's, that's crazy. So, so you kind of took the, the stance of, okay, let's build a thousand year manifesto, which actually it's the, it's pretty cool because most people can't think past tomorrow or today, quite honestly, we kind of really get focused in on that one dimensional daytime stuff, right? It's like today, 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 yep. it's my to-do list for a reason. I don't really care about the future. So what, what makes you think that a thousand days will help kind of guide that as well or a thousand years or a thousand days yeah thousand years okay, okay. Thousand which is days cool no i, I that, that yep. that's really amazing that you would actually yeah. just put that out there because like most people would go i can't think about tomorrow built it built it into our manifesto and i think i think that's very important because what that then does uh, it removes us from it because what we are now doing is laying the foundation principles or the hooks um, the morals, the values, the integrities that we'd like to see being the foundation that may last for a thousand years. And then it allows individuals to actually come on. Remember, in, you, we've got what? How many smartphone users? About five, five and a half billion smartphone users of about nearly eight billion um, inhabitants on the planet right now. I, I mean, you're just never going to ever going to appeal to all of those people. So, uh, you know, our objectives are to get a million difference makers on board as a movement. Now, can you do that in one day? Can you do that in a week? Can you do that in a year? Um, sometimes that might be too big an objective for many people. So, um, for us, we've actually turned around and said, listen, if it takes us a thousand years to have that done, what we've now got to do and put in place right now is a series of hooks that people can hang their hat on so that they can become, they might be followers today of the movement, but tomorrow they are the new leaders that take it forward, but they know that it's based on certain integrity. So uh, we've put forward this principle program called the Difference Makers, um, and we've set a series of 10 principles, which uh, are principles that people can hang their hats on, and then they can develop their own um, their own initiatives of that particular base in every city in the world. Mm. Actually, you know what? I'm just thinking we should team up with you because I, I think I've spoken to you about the Grace Swan Guild, um, where it's a, an organization out of Canada that we kind of created in 2020 as well. And, and we do do like these cities, like we have the city of the month kind of thing. So maybe we could like yep. somehow highlight that specific city um, as well during these, I think um this november is it is it or october maybe it's it's um uh brazil i think but anyway yeah so so look i'll see what i can do to kind of see how we can connect these these dots here because it's really fascinating like honestly yeah. i really respect what you're doing trevor because it, it's 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 like it's thinking it's big thinking which is which is oh, yeah. so important uh yeah. as well so, hey, listen, I don't want to keep you. I want to thank you, Trevor, for having for taking the time out. And I know you had some some family stuff as well. So I really appreciate uh, being able to speak with you um, as well, which is always a lot of fun. 
Can can I drop in? Have you? Yeah. I, I see you're almost at the top of the hour, or wherever you are. You do you need the time? Uh, I that little uh, observation that you had that said, "Hey, I've got someone that I I need to connect you with." Um, what we have in these documents here are for people who who are great at what they do uh, yeah. and in any city around the world, and you've got a project and you want to actually collaborate with us, just get into those particular links, work out what it is that you're great at. We're also great at what we do, but we obviously are not as good as what you you are. And, and I particularly talk about things in the social media environment, uh, utilizing all these new technologies, and we can work out a way when you've built a database of this size, uh, how we can actually develop new revenue producing projects or uh, difference making projects all around the world. So whether you want to be a social uh, movement or whether you want to be a business movement, uh, because uh, starting a movement is really like creating a brand. It's one and the mm -hmm. same thing. Um, so the basics are absolutely the same. Uh, so um, I just want to put the invite out to people out there who actually want to make some big things happen. This is what we're doing all day. I spend you on my own little digital island. You might have seen my little logo there, relaxed mm. with a, a drink uh, to buy here, coconut. Um, you've got to have fun. I, I heard uh, one of your people, it might have been you, you've got to have a hoot. Um, business is about having a hoot. Yeah, uh, well, that's I, where I pulled out my 3D glasses to say, these are my my bullshit um filters so when you got this yep. you kind of <laughs> can see through this the bullshit <laughs> exactly exactly you got to uh, today you got to have fun and the world is so cynical and negative at the moment uh, that it really needs some great positive thinking what yeah. you're doing is absolutely fantastic uh, I, i've seen you develop that little concept the tetrahedon contract uh, concept from a napkin a paper napkin i saw you fold in it and look at what you're doing merchandising online yeah. These networks, hey, Doyle, uh, man, strength for your elbow. It's absolutely uh, fantastic. Uh, so thank I wish you so you well. much. Yeah, thank you so much, Trevor. Really appreciate uh, you taking the time to, to join in. All right, cool. So I'm just going to do a quick close, and then I've got some other guests coming up as well on the hour. I have Timothy Hughes from England, the author of the amazing book, uh, Social Selling, uh, which we're going to be giving away a copy or I'm going to be giving away a copy. And uh, then at half past the hour, we have Dean Keating as well, who's uh, District 32 Networking Business Development Group here in Perth, Australia, all the way from Ireland, appearing in Perth. So we're going to be chatting with him as well. So just to close this session, I really want to thank everybody who's watching. I'm going to be continuing uh, on live as well uh, in the next um uh, in the next session coming up in a, just a few minutes, and I'm just going to quickly run through the strategy storming side of things so that we can actually see uh, what we're actually doing with the, the website and, and why I feel it's, it's really important uh, as well. So it's the grand opening of the online stu strategy studio and shop that is changing how we rethink, reinvent, and reimagine how to do better business. So like I said, we have Timothy Hughes coming and we have Dean Keaton as well coming up. Uh, it's been an amazing day so far. We've had uh, 20, almost 20, I think. We're on page number three, just meeting some incredibly incredible people around the world. And that's sort of the coolest thing here. It really makes me smile is that we've been able to connect with people from literally around the world, around the clock. So it's been fascinating. I know it's I, when I set it up, it's like, oh, it's like, I've got like 13 hours worth of guests. It's like, what did I, what did I put myself in for? But I'm really excited by the outcome as well. So we're here to celebrate the grand opening of the strategy studio, strategystorming.co. Uh, you can win a lot of prizes. I've got a whole bunch of books. Uh, I've got my book. I've got a whole stack of books from some of the authors who came and spoke. Uh, Anthony Griffiths, Michael Haynes, uh, Dave Clare, uh, Daniel Priestley. Uh, there's quite a few a few there that uh, we're able to do. Uh, I've, I have um, the strategy storming um, uh, blue sky strategy whiteboard. And I want I haven't had actually enough time to show this, but what this actually is, is it's a whiteboard that actually folds into the shape. So what it is, it's used for brainstorming for, for some of your divergent thinking. 
we use a model, which I'm going to get to into shortly, um, a quick little model called the ounce model. And we're actually able to put these on here and then we can replace them, write them, uh, you, you name it. It's, it's a whiteboard. So we can actually define it. We can brainstorm our strategy with this actual shape. And just so I'm not wasting everybody's time at the end of the day, what we do is we're able to fold it together and create our own specific model as well. And what this is, is it's a strategy model that you can see, you can touch, you can feel, you can, you can chuck it at somebody, you can pass it to, to your neighbor, you can show your teammates, you can show your customers and your clients. This is how we function. This is this, this is what holds us together. This is the architecture of our business. So I'm really quite excited because we're launching this uh, specific whiteboard, the strategy, uh, blue sky strategy whiteboard um, that allows you to, to do that. And there's also a, um, a kit version, which is one of the, uh, the gifts as well. So if actually I'll, I'll just advance the slides a bit, but it's one of the uh, strategy canvas worksheets that I have allowing you to kind of see the details of the model uh, as well. I'm just going to share my screen here um, so we can, can see all that. And um, I, I talked about winning the pair of 3D glasses as well. So these are your, these are your, your BS detectors or BS lenses. So you can see through all the stuff and, and just focus on what's really important, right? And so you can see the 3D stuff. No, not really. It's just for fun. It's to have a good time and to understand that, hey, business can, can be serious, but we can also have a little bit of fun with it as well. Um, I have the easy strategy lab code as well. And one of the things that I like to, to chuckle about is, is kind of getting your, into your, your state, into your zone. And one of the ways we did that in school was what you put on your lab coat when you did your chemistry labs and that sort of thing. So it's a, it's a, a state that you can actually change to. So what I want to do is, is be able to produce that, create that. Uh, with strategy, with strategy storming. So it's like activewear for the creative strategist. So you can win this, enter to win at strategystorming.co and uh, you'll win your very own exclusive team awesome uh, strategy storming strategy lab coat. So when you really want to develop a good strategy, that's what you need to be putting on uh, these days as well. So just to wrap up a few other notes, and then we'll continue on with the next session. So uh, we've, we also have the neuromarketing marketing advantage of strategy. And what this is, is it's called the strategic dynamics of strategy. And what it allows you to do is actually see different profiles and see what type of strategic thinker you are and where some of your gaps are and, or where some of your biases might lie as well. And whether you're a learner, a uh, an entrepreneur, a creator, uh, an innovator, and so on. So it gives you that knowledge to say, hey, this is the type of, this is the way that I'm able to, to handle uh, strategic problems and challenges and, and use them in an effective manner as well as ways so, as well. So point your camera at that QR code, and that allows you to get, uh, go right to the quiz as well and answer the questions on that. Um, just quickly moving on. The grand opening studio and shop sales, so 20% off all products. I have some workshops coming up. I've got, I have the uh, one big one, the Strategy Academy Annual Strategy Planning Festival uh, coming up in the third week of November. Um, I have my monthly strategy storming strategy mastery workshops as well, and that's all there. So all the products are there. There's um, workbooks, there's books, there's um, all kinds of strategy tools. There's, there's the the um, uh, the whiteboards we've actually partnered as well with a company that does um, it's called bravestorming.com and they're actually producing some some uh, brainstorming tools which are really cool and we've kind of teamed up with them and producing some templates uh, for that as well so for this weekend only ends like sunday night at uh 11 31st of october or is that monday that's monday uh last two items 2022 strategy survey so we want to know what you think about business strategy uh, is it time for reinvention time to see the blue sky with strategy and your transformation toolbox so i'd really like your insight we, honestly, one of the th themes that we've talked about today, almost every speaker mentioned it, is that we need to know, we need to see, and we need to understand the signals that are, we're seeing in the industry, in your specific industry as well. I'd love to get your insights on this. What do you see happening? What can you see in your industry as well? And we're compiling those and then going to be presenting them at the uh, Strategy Planning Fest coming up in uh, uh, November as well. So if you could, please go to bit.ly slash strategy survey 2022. Uh, we'd love to see, you know, take the temperature of what's going on in the, in the, in the world as well. All right. And then the last gift uh, of the day is uh, the strategy canvas worksheet. And what that is, is basically taking the model 
and saying, how can we actually apply this to, to our specific business? So it's a solutions kit ultimately. And we're able to take it and say, okay, let's walk through this, this process. Uh, let's walk through these specific steps to see how I can actually create one uh, a strategy for my business. And if you can see, that's kind of what we're talking about. We are, what I call it is the AMPS model, the audience method process and story. And each one of these tells a specific story um, of what's important to your business. How do you want to develop it? How do you want to adapt? How do you want to evolve with each of these specific pieces? Uh, and we can put all these pieces together and then go through the exercise of what questions do I need to know? What's important? What's not important? How do each of these segments actually interact and engage with each other? And then at the end of the day, we can actually produce that. Uh, we're able to create one out of this paper. Uh, we take our brainstorming ideas, our, our, our answers from our questions, apply it to the, the paper model. And through the, the, um, through the magical use of television and video and Zoom, we can actually create that into a 3D model of our business. And this is, this is unique in that you can actually, it's a strategy, it's a model that you can see, feel, touch. I can give it to you. I can pass it to you. You can use it for your customer conversations. Um, you can go through all that as well. So I'm giving this all away for free. Just go to strategystorming.co. If you want to go quickly, just use your QR, use the QR code rather uh, on the, uh, uh, the slide there, and that'll get you a free copy. And that's the digital download. Just to be clear, there are two versions. There's a paper copy and a digital download. This is the free copy of the, the um, a digital download as well. And enter, you have to enter the code strategy storming dot slash dot, sorry, dash DD. <laughs> All right, excellent. So we're coming up very quick. I'm just going to start stop this session uh, just for continuity so that we're able to uh, continue on shorter um, shorter shows instead of one big, long 13 hour show. So I will turn off the save and I'll turn off the live stream. And then we'll be back shortly with, uh, on the same channel with, uh, Timothy Hughes and then, uh, our next speaker as well, Dean coming up.